And when you think of surveillance, you probably think of Big Brother or some hidden spy cameras. But in reality, the city of Seattle uses surveillance technologies a lot, and they do it a lot more openly than you might think. Here to tell us more is City of Seattle Chief Privacy Officer Ginger Armbruster and Seattle Police Sergeant Sean Whitcomb. Thanks for being here today. Thanks Thank for having you. us. So Privacy Officer, you're yeah. over the whole city. That, that's kind of that's a right. new thing, right, for cities it, to have it, to deal with? It is a new thing. Uh, we were. I was one of the first Chief Privacy Officers. The city was one of the first cities to have that role. And uh, there are a few popping up in other places around the country, but it is a relatively new role, looking at how do we protect the personal information of the public that we collect. So tell us uh, a little bit about some of the surveillance that's being done on, on the citizens of Seattle. Well, we have, uh, we went through an exercise. We took a look at all the things that we do, all the technologies we have after the passing of an ordinance, uh, the surveillance ordinance uh, that was in, uh, passed in 2017. And we took a look and found there are about 29 technologies, most with the police, but some in other departments that monitor, analyze, capture, and, and take a look at what individual, identifiable individuals are doing. And that's the definition of surveillance. So yeah. everything from uh, license plate readers to uh, other technologies that take a look at what you're doing cybercrime wise, mm -hmm. there's a, a variety of things. So Sean, what are some of the things that uh, the police department is doing as they uh, go through the city? Well right now what we're talking about is license plate reader technology and basically this means we've got a set number of cars that are driving through the city just basically crunching license plates looking for your stolen car if your car was stolen and of course everyone's interested in getting their car back faster mm -hmm. so we've got license plate reader technology that can crunch license plates and can also do something we call e-chalking used to be back in the day parking enforcement officers would have to reach out with a like a long mm -hmm. stick with a piece of chalk attached to it and uh, put a little marking on your tire and that way they know if your car hasn't moved like within a certain amount of time frame and with e-chalking with license plate reader technology they can just drive by and they'll know whether or not you moved your car and you're using this now yeah and it makes it makes officers more efficient it's basically allowing us to do more work with less instead of actually manually looking at license plates or chalking tires we're able to just do it automatically so that's a good tip because I've been looking for the chalk when I parked in <laughs> Seattle, so I didn't know that this was going on. It's very helpful for me, so I appreciate that. <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, different things that you're doing. So wh why do you think people sometimes are resistant to surveillance? I mean, everything we do is now, you know, your cell phone, Alexa. I mean, there's so many things that are being you're being surveilled on. Why do people are resistant of the city or the police department doing that? I think we have a, a real difference between what we're willing to do for convenience and making a choice about in our private lives, everything from banking to purchasing things online. Mm -hmm. to, and then when we think about the government collecting that information, that becomes a very different calculus. I don't really know what's happening with that information. Who else is seeing it? How is it being shared? Uh, did I have an opportunity to know about it? And that's what this exercise is about. It's but it's really at, all helpful for the citizens. It is all helpful to meet missions, to meet goals, to make sure, for example, license plate readers are also used to manage traffic, to be able to tell how long mm -hmm. it takes to get through a certain area in the city. That allows our uh, traffic engineers to make choices about changing lighting. So a, a lot of these technologies across all departments are really designed, and especially for police, to really help help meet the mission of the city, which is protect property and people. And, and that's, right. Yeah. Tell me about, there's one, uh, the hazmat, it's called hazmat materials camera. What is that all about? The, the, the Seattle Fire Department uses that, and it allows them to go into a situation that's uh, a, toxic waste, other kinds of hazardous materials. It allows them to uh, take a look at the situation on iPad. It's an iPad technology that gets beamed back so that they have a minimum amount of people on site who might be personally, um, uh, shouldn't be exposed to the material and allows them to make decisions about how to treat the, uh, treat the situation. So it's, it's an opportunity for fewer people to record and figure out what's going on around a spill or another kind of hazardous material situation. So I read in your release and some information about this meeting that you're gonna have and I'll tell you details about the meeting later on but uh, that there are, what, 29 or 30 29. things that you're doing now in the city where we're being surveilled. And, and a various, various uh, intensity of surveillance. Some of these really are cameras. Some of these mm -hmm. are binoculars. Some of these are uh, low tech, some are higher tech. And most of them reside in the investigative side uh, of the Seattle Police Department. And how do you think it, it helps uh, the police department overall with, with this kind of technology? Well, it helps us do our jobs, which fundamentally is promoting public safety, solving crimes, keeping people safe, and keeping traffic moving. Like with the license plate reader technology, some of the concerns that we've heard is that we're storing data uh, longer than we should. And the fact is we're storing it for about 90 days and before it's purged. And the idea there is if there's a shooting, and we have a partial license plate, we can go ahead and run that through our license plate reader technology. Instead of doing like the traditional be on the lookout, you know, 
All Points mm -hmm. Bulletin, uh, where officers are looking for a, a, you know, a Honda Accord with the license plate ABC. We're able to put this in our computer, and we've got specialized cars that will just crunch the license plates as we're driving down the street. So it's like it's more of a passive surveillance. And of course, the concern is, well, what are you doing with it? Mm -hmm. And we do have laws and policies in place that protect the public from any kind of uh, wrongful intrusion. It's funny how people don't care about their Google searches, but they care about what you guys are doing with the information. It's pretty amazing to me. But there's one thing I wanted to talk about. I, I saw in uh, your press release also about this gray key thing about iPhones, and I, I thought it was an amazing thing uh, where, uh, tell me a little bit about that. It's like you can unlock, it's technology to unlock phones in an accident, right? Well, for, for an investigative uh, situation, so somebody is um, suspected of a crime, uh, primarily this would be of use, at least initially, uh, for the internet, crimes against children, um, so some of the exploitation and, and those kinds of uses, so breaking into somebody's device to find out is there evidence of that crime. And that's what these phone, these phone unlockers are yeah, designed to Yeah, I mean, for. ultimately, you've got a phone that gets locked, and when we've made an arrest and we're trying to find evidence of a crime, like uh, child exploitation or child pornography, we will obtain a search warrant that's you know, reviewed by a prosecutor and signed by a judge that will allow us into that phone. But if the phone is locked because of technology, we will need a way to unlock right. it. It's like unlocking a door. So we need to unlock that phone. And this gray key technology, um, of course, is going through the process right now, so we don't have it. And furthermore, there's been some news showing that Apple updated their phone, so there's some question as mm -hmm. to how well it works. It. But the concept is the same. It will allow us into a phone with a search warrant. Mm -hmm. And it's no different than going into someone's house and like collecting guns that they might have right. or evidence of a homicide crime. Yeah. And all of these, all 29 surveillance uh, systems that the city of Seattle is using are under uh, review right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the city is actually holding an open house about police surveillance technologies tonight from 5 to 6.30 at the Green Lake Branch Library in Seattle. You can find out more uh, details on the New Day website. So lots going on in the city of Seattle. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank Appreciate you for the time. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Stylist Darcy Camden is here with last